That guy's name is Rivas, and then the Husky's Kai. I'm Nick Ander, the chef at Mylino, and here's my uh, kimchi fried rice. Yum. This is a dish that my wife and I make at home together all the time on weekends. Uh, so I brought some like pork scraps from the restaurant. I got shoulder and belly in there. Mm -hmm. Does Danny know that you take pork scraps home? He's had my food before and he knows I'm taking yeah. it straight from the restaurant. The dogs know too because I give them their beef fat from uh, all of our beef trim. They nice. fatten them up. We take a whole lot of onions. I use like a whole white onion. My mother-in-law made this and it's awesome. I have some other spicier stuff too that I'm gonna mix in. I always cook with extra Real virgin olive oil. Nice. It's like, I know it's breaking all the rules. I get a nice hot cast iron pan. I love the cast iron pans for fried rice because like, you can get a nice like char on the rice. It uh -huh. gets that like crispy bits. Uh -huh. And I'm gonna put in some pork belly here. Do you, do you ever use like cured pork? Like if you had like bacon or guanciale or something hanging around? You'd... I wouldn't use bacon or guanciale because it's too salty. Okay. Although, you know what? That doesn't really make any sense because <laughs> I use Spam all the time and Spam has tons of sodium right, right. in it. <laughs> But pork belly is perfect because it's just neutral pork flavor. I'm just gonna pepper the crap out of this, get a lot of pepper on there. And I'm gonna get the onions in there. I like to create layers of flavor. I want the pork to taste like something before it's introduced to everything else. There should be like a guy on the corner of like 14th Street and Avenue A that serves this stuff Doing, instead yeah, of like the friend. gyros. Maybe, I, I bet you he would kill it with all the late night people that are drunk stumbling home to Stye Town. So I think one of the things that makes this rice so good is like all the burnt things that you got going on. The caramelization is what's really good. So when you put the onions in in the beginning, you definitely want to let them sit in the pan and they brown and they do their thing and almost get a little bit burnt. So once the kimchi's in, it doesn't really need to cook for that long in the pan. I think this dish really works best if you're using day old rice because when you use fresh rice, it's a little bit sticky, there's a little bit too much water content in it. You want the rice to actually be a little bit dried out and it soaks in so much more flavors from the soy sauce or whatever it is you're putting in, especially the pork fat. Break up the rice with a little bit of kimchi juice and all that sizzles together and you kind of make like a rice omelet. You press it down into the pan, you get some more caramelization on the rice. A little bit of Korean red pepper paste, gochujang, just to scrape the bottom. You see all so that So this is stuff. something you wouldn't want to do with like a, unless you got a cast iron, right? Yeah. You can do it with stainless steel. You don't want to do it on like a non-stick. Yeah, or like just scratch it up. I like to get a little bit of sugar in the pan too because then it helps with that second caramelization. Okay, it's like Korean paella. <laughs> might, might have just stolen some pork belly while you were. Yeah, did you steal some? How did it taste? <laughs> Good. <laughs> so I always give it a taste sort of halfway through the cooking process. I say it's about two thirds right now. Mm -hmm. My problem is that at the, at the times that I'd be cooking something like this, I'm usually a pretty bad judge <laughs> of what it needs. Like, because at that, that, those times of night, I want everything really salty and really spicy. If it makes any sense, I think that chefs have a drunk palate all the time, right. meaning they right. always like spicy, right, salty. Right, right, right. <laughs> I just tasted it right now, and it's great. It doesn't taste like any other time I've ever made it. At the last moment, the sesame oil. Italian food, it's always like lemon and Parmesan for me. Those two things always work. For some reason, in Korean food, black pepper and sesame oil always work. So imagine doing this all drunk. Right. Can you make <laughs> it happen? Can you do it? <laughs> Get a piece of pork in there, burn my mouth. A little more salt and some spicy sauce. <laughs> Super Need a little spice. Nice. Tastes like something my mom would have made for me. Plate this up all fancy like. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Bowl, chopsticks. <laughs> Cheers, buddy. Yeah. That spice did the trick. Yeah, it's good. It's too bad you finished your beer up. <laughs> Definitely need a beer. Up. When you got that salt, spice, and sweet going on all at once, uh, I mean, what what goes better with it than a beer? And especially if you're a little bit drunk, this is the perfect dish to make because there's a lot of room for error. You can fudge it, you can mess it up, and it's still gonna taste good. Cheers. It's the only thing I guess I'm first now. Mm. Mm. Can you just start rolling? Yeah. Yeah? You're good. Kaka. <laughs> oh, boo boo. Why are you gonna walk away from daddy when I got all the food? I'm gonna stay mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. This goes against everything I believe in table feeding the dogs.